Hello, I'm Chuck Wolf, Chief Executive for Charles J. Wolf Associates, LLC. As a motivational speaker and a leadership consultant and executive coach and trainer, I often work with very successful people in their companies. Since many can't afford a professional, I volunteer to host a radio talk show called The Emotion Roadmap, Take the Wheel and Control How You Feel, on a nonprofit community radio station in Bridgeport, Connecticut, WPKN. My reason for doing the show is to share with as many people as possible this wonderful process for helping people manage their own emotions and their relationships with others. My goal is for everyone listening to learn to use the Emotion Roadmap to make life better. As you listen to me, help others, I hope you are also learning. As a Simsbury resident, I'm delighted to be able to make the show available through Simsbury TV. To learn more, go to my website, www.emotionroadmap.com. Thank you for listening and watching. Hey, and this is Chuck Wolf, and you're listening to the Emotion Roadmap. Take the wheel and control how you feel. Glad to be with you, everybody. Uh, I've had a really interesting few weeks. I just came back from Montreal where I had a chance to speak to, oh, probably two or three hundred people, maybe all together. But um, anyway, uh, well, maybe not that many, but somewhere around 200, I guess, between classes and uh, at HEC, Montreal, one of the um, schools, uh, one of the graduate schools of business. I was up talking to professionals, too, professional coaches, a lot about how emotions and coaching make a connection. So I'm filled with energy and lots of exciting ideas and innovations that were talked about with the people that were in the presentation that I made and Lots of requests for more information and, and very excited. And one of the things that I shared with the group I want to share with all of you today, and that is the idea that, you know, there's some things that really influence, I think, how people deal with one another, how we form relationships, how we maintain relationships, how we enhance relationships. And that's important to the show. And it's important that people who are listening feel as though that they benefit somehow from the conversations I have here when I'm on the air. And again, you're listening to the Emotion Roadmap. Take the wheel and control how you feel. And I'm Chuck Wolf, the host for the show. And we're in our 10th year, by the way, which is very exciting to me to be finishing up our 10th year. We'll soon be starting our 11th, which um, no, just it's fun, kind of uh, interesting interesting milestone to think about being on the air that long. Uh, now, I know there's plenty of people here at WPKN that have been on for many, many more years. Uh, but for me, just 10 years ago, when Lou Pomalis asked me, Chuck, would you be interested in hosting a radio show where you talk about the emotion roadmap and you help people out by answering their questions and their challenges that they face in everyday life? Um, would you want to do that? And um, I thought, wow, that sounds like a great idea. And then Lou worked really hard with the people here at PKN to make that happen. And 10 years later, we're still doing it. So I'm very excited to be part of the show. But one of the things that I was telling the people who were coaches is that, you know, one of the things that's really interesting about how people sell products, especially these days, is we sell products by telling stories. And every brand has a story behind it. And every story has to be compelling for people to be interested in maybe being becoming a, a part of your brand community, someone who purchases your products, your services. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the brand I think that I bring to my show, or at least what I care about and what I'm hoping to do. Because one of the things that you'll notice is that in our world, there's always challenges. We've, we've had challenges every day, every year for millennium. It's not, it's not just this year that things are challenging for us, but it does seem to me that we seem to have lots of conflict all over the world. Um, in, in third world, second world, first world nations, everywhere, there's lots of conflict. And, and, and the thing that I think is keeping us from having a more peaceful planet is sometimes about our relationships. And one of the things that helps with relationships, I really believe, is if we can help each other, and this is really my story, if you will, have inner peace. The idea of the emotion roadmap, for me personally, one of the great gains for me was after I was invited to work with the pioneers in emotional intelligence to help them find a way to operationalize what we're learning about emotional intelligence and make it useful to folks, one of the things that I learned that really benefited me in trying to find ways to help others was this idea of trying to take more control over my own emotions.
and learning ways to do that, partly based on science, partly based on art, and in a multiple learning, a number of learning experiences that I had, bringing together lots of different ideas to form this, what seems very simple, series of questions that help people think about, what are you feeling? And if what you're feeling isn't ideal to feel, if it isn't really ideal to feel, what would be ideal? And if you're dealing with other people and trying to tackle certain challenges that you face or opportunities that you want to grab a hold of or situations that are confusing, and you're you're worried about the feelings that are involved, and you think about how you are feeling, and there's others maybe that are involved with these situations, these challenges or opportunities, and you realize that what they're feeling isn't particularly helpful. In fact, it may even be an obstacle to what you're trying to get done, or what you're trying to have happen. And the feelings you have personally are also potentially obstacles instead of helpful. Then this whole idea of planning emotionally, what would be ideal to feel is at the heart of this emotion roadmap and is at the heart of my story, which is because if you can change how you feel, if you can change how you feel from what's not helpful to what's absolutely ideal for you to feel in the current situation, and you can influence how others are feeling, so you change how they are feeling to more ideal feelings for what you want to achieve, I think you generate inner peace inside yourself. And I think if you can generate inner peace inside yourself and you're showing up as more calm and more capable, that that feeling that you generate will help you and keeping others calm. Because there's such a thing called emotional contagion that sometimes if you are just emanating calmness, even in really challenging crisis-oriented times, Sometimes if you're powerful in communicating how you're feeling in a positive way, in a constructive way, that calmness that emanates from you creates a calmness in the room with others. And if you're skillful and thoughtful and care about others and you understand why others might be feeling very different, insecure, frightened, anxious, even terrified or angry or enraged even, and you understand what's causing their feelings, the more skilled you are, and hopefully you get skilled listening to this show and to me, the more skilled you are at helping others to feel that centered feeling of calmness. If we can generate inner peace in ourselves and in others, I think we're all making a contribution to a more peaceful planet. And that's my story. I think I'm going to try and tell that at the beginning of my shows pretty often from now on. I just want you to understand that the goal for the show is to help you to generate inner peace, to help you to learn to be smarter about how you manage your own emotions and how you are helpful to others in managing theirs. Now, let me just try and make this work for you. Now, the show's a call-in show often, although at times I do interviews. And I will mention someone I'm going to interview in a little bit. I was coming up right after the show. I'm going to interview somebody. And you'll hear that show on December 4th, I believe. But right now, I want to just talk to you about how you are feeling. Because most of the time, many of us, if not most of us, if not all of us, aren't thinking about how we're feeling unless those feelings are really powerful, right? It's kind of like breathing. Huh. Most of the time, many of us, hopefully, are all breathing very easily, in fact, but we're not thinking about breathing, are we? Until I just said, focus on breathing or think about breathing or I mentioned breathing, you're really not thinking about it, are you? Mostly, we just breathe. When do we think about breathing? When we've just gone up a flight of steps and we're and our breathing is labored, or if we're in trouble physically, something's wrong with us, and we're really having a hard time breathing. Maybe it's altitude that's got you, or maybe it's something going on physiologically that's wrong with you. Internally, something's happening that's causing you not to be able to breathe well. Then, of course, we notice 
our breathing. The reason I mentioned breathing is because breathing, to me, is like feelings. Unless we have feelings that are really powerful and compelling and causing us to have to think about the fact that we're feeling angry or sad or overwhelmed or stressed, unless we notice that we're feeling really strong, powerful feelings, most of the time we're just feeling something and not paying attention to it. And I think one of the great skills here that I'm hoping everyone who listens regularly to the show, and let me stop and just say thank you to all of those of you that regularly turn in, uh, tune in. If you're new to the show, um, I'll mention the fact that the show is on 12 to 1 p.m., the first and second Wednesdays of each month. There have been different times when the show's been on other times, but for the last year or so, it's been on 12 to 1 p.m., the first two Wednesdays of each month. So on some months where there might be five Wednesdays in a given month, you only hear me twice. And it's hard to find, it's hard to remember. But I guess if you want a diary, you, you know, you know, these, these uh, smartphones are really helpful for di- different things like remembering birthdays and so forth. If you really like the show and you want to remember to tune in when it's live, you can do that by just, you know, typing in, you know, Chuck Wolf Emotion Roadmap, 12 to 1 p.m., first Wednesdays of every month. And usually your smartphone lets you do that. Second Wednesday is the very month. Okay? But the reason I do the show, as I said, I'm trying to help people to get more control over their feelings. And the ultimate goal is to, is to generate inner peace, that calmness. And you know what's coming up, folks? If you haven't already thought a lot about this, is Thanksgiving. And what does Thanksgiving bring? Lots of family together. Family that loves each other and doesn't always like each other. Families who come together who have different views about politics, about religion, about um, all kinds of different things, about the death penalty, you know, and sometimes we find ourselves at odds with other people in our families. And so one of the things I want to help you with today is trying to see about understanding and paying more attention to the current feelings you have. And then I want to see about seeing if there's some things I might say that might influence how you're feeling a bit. So first of all, if you would, just stop for a moment and think. What is it I'm feeling right now? What is it I'm feeling? Now, it sounds like a simple question, but what's somewhat amazing and a little bit disturbing and and possibly disappointing is that we don't really know how we're feeling sometimes. We don't have language to describe how we're feeling. So one of the people I'm going to be talking to after this show ends today and and, uh, recording for December 4th show is a fellow named Mark Brackett. Now, Mark Brackett is the director for the Center of Emotional Intelligence at Yale University. And Mark's a friend and colleague I've known since, I don't know, maybe 15 some years now, probably a little bit more. I think we met each other around 2002. And we worked together for a few years um, in the early 2000s. And then um, over the years, Mark has gone on to do some pretty incredible things at Yale. In the way, at the center, they've developed a program that's called RULER. And RULER stands for, it's an acronym, it stands for R for recognize emotions in ourselves and others. U for understand emotions, how emotions work. R-U-L, L for label emotions, have a vocabulary so the next time I ask you what it is you're feeling, you have a, a wealth of, of words to draw from that describe intricate, nuanced feelings, and you are really good at that. Um, so that's labeling emotions, that you're good at labeling emotions. The E in ruler stands for expressing emotions, that if you want to express your joy, You know how to do that. If you want to express your sadness, your discomfort, your irritation. Anyway, the idea of E is being able to express emotion. And the last R in ruler is for regulate, which is your ability to regulate emotions or manage your emotions. Now, one of the things Mark's done is he's created um, with other colleagues, including one of my friends, David Caruso, uh, something called a mood meter. And a mood meter is a way of measuring how you feel in sort of quadrants, four quadrants. 
And I'm going to talk to you about those in a minute because I'm going to give you a bunch of words. And as I say these words, you can think, is that how I'm feeling? Because I want to give you a number of words to think about. And this will help with your vocabulary a bit. If you open it, Mark wrote a new book. That's what I'm interviewing. I'm going to be interviewing about his book called Permission to Feel. F-E-E-L, to feel. Unlocking the power of emotions to help our kids, ourselves, and our society thrive. And when you open up his book on the inside cover of the hard copy, there's four quadrants. There's a red quadrant. There's a yellow quadrant. Those are on top. Red is the top left. Yellow is the top right. The bottom left is a blue quadrant. And the bottom right is a green quadrant. So if you can picture it, what I'm looking at in front of me is red on top, blue on the bottom, on the left, on the right, yellow on top, green on the bottom. Now, it may be hard for some of you to picture this, but if you look at the top two, the red and the yellow quadrants, the one on the top left and the top right, they represent high energy. The bottom two represent low energy. So one thing you might be thinking about right now is, what's your energy level like? Do you have a high energy? Do you have a low energy? Well, let me just stop and ask you to think for a minute. Are you feeling like you have a lot of energy? I do. You can hear it in my voice, hopefully. You can hear I have high energy. Because I'm excited about doing my radio show, and I'm excited about talking to all of you. I'm excited about the fact that people like to tune in and listen. I didn't always know, you know, when I first started out with radio, it's kind of a funny thing, isn't it? I'm talking into a microphone, and I have no idea if anybody out there has the dial tuned to WPKN 89.5 FM. I have no idea if anybody, if they do have the dial, that they're really listening to what I'm saying. I'm just talking into a microphone and hoping somebody out there happens to be tuned in and feeling there's some value in what I'm saying and what I'm doing right now. But I have found that there are lots of people that listen. I've had lots of callers call in and get help because the show often is about helping you deal with challenging situations by introducing to you my emotion roadmap and helping you understand how you can change the feelings you have if they're not helpful to ones that are more ideal. Okay, so more with the mood meter. So the top quadrant, the red on top is high energy. The yellow on top is high energy, but they're different. The red is low pleasantness in terms of your feelings. So what you might be feeling is perhaps enraged, panic. This is what's in red. Stressed, jittery, uh, frightened, angry, nervous, restless. Worried, apprehensive. These are all words from the red category, which says you have low pleasantness in terms of the kind of feelings you're experiencing, but a lot of energy around them. On the high energy, very pleasant feelings that you might be experiencing, if you're in the yellow quadrant, you might be upbeat, festive, exhilarated, even ecstatic, inspired, motivated, cheerful, happy, proud, hopeful, playful, joyful, focused, lively. Now, that's all feelings, according to the research Mark has done, that fit into the yellow quadrant, which again is high energy and high pleasantness. And I told you about what's in the red quadrant, which is high energy and low pleasantness. So what's in the bottom, which are the low energy quadrants? So for low pleasantness, in the blue, you might be feeling disappointed, discouraged, apathetic, disheartened, lonely, sullen, exhausted, drained, miserable, pessimistic, alienated. That's all in the blue. Now, as I'm saying these words, I'm hoping you're thinking about, well, how am I feeling right now? One am I in the high energy quadrants with red or yellow, or am I in the low? If I'm in the low and in the unpleasant, then maybe I heard a word or two that maybe said, hey, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. But you might be in the pleasant category and just have low energy. So you might feel content. This is in the green, low energy, but pleasant feelings. You might feel content. You might feel loving, fulfilled, grateful, satisfied, restful, complacent, thoughtful, chill, Peaceful, comfortable, 
cozy, serene. One of the things that Mark has done with his book, and I'll say a lot more about this when we do the interview, but I highly recommend it. It's very accessible. It's not researchy at all. There's not, not really jargon in it. It's really all about how do you better recognize, understand, label, express, and regulate emotions. How do you do it? What's been Mark's experiences? What is what has his personal journey been about? So you're kind of back and forth between Mark's own experiences growing up, um, the love and pride he feels for his uncle, who was incredibly important to him as an adult in his life. Mark had some challenges growing up that you can read about in the book or maybe here in the interview. Um, but one of the things that happened was he had a wonderful uncle who really understood the power of being able to do the kinds of things that are in this ruler program, which is really understand your own feelings, learn how to express your feelings, learn how to label your feelings, learn more about understanding how feelings work, recognize how you're feeling, and also regulate. Mark's uncle was the initial genius behind all this great work that they're doing at the Center for Yale University. Um, so anyway, my thought for you at this point is to ask you again, having heard all those words, are you in a high energy, pleasant, low energy, pleasant, High energy, unpleasant. Low energy, unpleasant category. Where do you fall? Initially, just think about where am I fall in terms of category, okay? And then ask yourself, are one of the words or any of the words that I might have said trigger for you? Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. That's That really describes how I'm feeling. And if it did, I'd like you to hold on to that thought for a moment. What are you feeling now? Now, what I do with the Emotion Roadmap, just so you understand how the Emotion Roadmap works, is I ask people, if, is what you're feeling right now helpful to what you might be trying to achieve at the moment? In other words, if you have certain challenges that are facing you, it's, it's somewhere between 12 and 12.30. It's 12.22 or so uh, Eastern Time right now. So you're midway through your potential work day if you work a regular shift in the daytime starting somewhere around 7 to 9 o'clock in the morning to somewhere between 3 to 7 o'clock at night, somewhere in there. Um, you're probably somewhere halfway through your day. Have you got done what you wanted to get done? And I'm not, Even in asking that, I know probably the answer is no. <laughs> it's funny how we start off with a group of things every morning that we think we're going to get done and Somehow, the end of the day comes and they aren't all done. We found different things, other things that show up that we were, we didn't, had no idea were coming our way. We end up doing those sometimes instead of what we planned for. But, you know, you're sort of in the middle of the day, and I'm asking you, how are you feeling? Are you feeling really good because you got done a lot of what was really important to get done? Are you feeling okay because most of what you need to do is on track? It's not finished yet, but you're at a good place with it? Um, one of the things that I've asked people to do if you really want to get good at this, and by the way, some of you are regular listeners, I'd love for you to do this. So here's a task for you. And maybe in a few weeks you could call and let me know how it's going. The idea is, you know, if you are someone that really wants to know more about emotional intelligence and be better at it, I suggest, strongly suggest, that you take the next couple of weeks and three times a day, and again, you can use your smartphone to set an alarm for this. Say at 10.30 to ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? Is what I'm feeling helpful? If it's not helpful, based on what I'm trying to get done, what, what would be better to feel? What would even be ideal to feel? And if you can answer that question and you realize that what you're feeling isn't helpful, maybe counterproductive, and what would be ideal to feel for right now would be great. Ask yourself, how do I get there? How do I change what I'm feeling to what I want to feel? What would be ideal to feel? See, about 10.30 is a good time to check in with yourself because, again, that's usually pretty early in your day still, relatively early. Maybe you want, you know, if you start earlier in the morning, maybe you want to check in at 9.30 even. But it's just a way of saying, you know, I'm off to a pretty good start or if things really going off the rails. I, you know, what I thought I was going to get done completely changed because I walked in the door and something completely took over. Um, my entire focus and my agenda became getting that done that I had no idea was coming my way. That might be okay, but are you feeling okay about it? 
What about the things that you thought you were going to get done? Is there something you want to be sure to at least let people know that you're not going to be working on? Something you thought you might have for them at the end of the day? So it's a good time to check in with yourself. Just ask, how am I feeling? And what would be ideal to feel? And if you're not feeling ideal, is there some way to change? If what you're feeling is fine, just keep moving. And then around 2.30, same thing, because 2.30 is an interesting time, because between 2.30 and 3.30, you know the day, end of the day is coming up pretty quick, and you might realize that some of the things that are really important today, or any day that you're doing this, aren't really going to happen. Is there somebody you should let know? Is there something different? Should you decide to stop? What you might be doing, because you know, we all get distracted, at least most of us do, from time to time. So we might have got caught up in something that, hey, that's pretty interesting what you just told me about. I'm going to look that up. And while it might be relevant to what's important to you in your life, to your job even, it may not be what's really important to focus on today, right now. And when you stop and check in how you're feeling... You'll notice that, and you'll realize that, and you probably will change back to, hey, I'm going to put this aside. I'll diary this to do another day. I need to finish what I was focused on before. So, again, 2.30 is a good time. And the last time I asked you to check in is around 7.30 at night. And the reason I say that is because so many people I know go home, and they think about going home and walking in that door, and they want to be with their loved ones in a very positive way day in a, in a very positive way rather so that you want to feel really content and you want to enjoy the moment and you want to experience a loving feeling when you walk in the door to see your family but that's not always what happens right sometimes we walk in the door and everybody's kind of at the end of their ropes everybody's had a busy day in their own way and maybe they end up the day frustrated upset or challenged or or at least drained they might have even a good day, but they're drained. And so the chance to be together in a meaningful, family-loving way is challenging for everyone. So if you sit back at 7.30 and you realize, or even 6.30, if you've got young kids and they're going to bed soon, you want to do this a little earlier, but for most of us, 7.30 is probably a good time. And you ask yourself, hey, am I really present here? Am I feeling like I'm here with my family? Am I still thinking about work? Am I still upset about something that happened during the day today? Have I not spent any time enjoying the people I say I love and care about? And it maybe causes you to refocus about being present at home in a loving, warm, meaningful way. If you do that for two weeks and you find it meaningful, you are going to take a step forward and being much smarter about emotions than most people on the planet. Because most people don't do this. They don't pay attention to how they feel until they have no choice. But by paying attention, purposefully focusing on how you feel, and then recognizing that the feelings you might have at a given moment in time are not helpful, and asking what would be ideal, you're on the way to becoming proficient in using the emotion roadmap to help make your life better. And again, if you were listening at the beginning of the show, to generate inner peace inside yourself. So that at the end of the day, you've thought about the day at different points where you really know what happened today and why, and you focused on the right things. Because you checked yourself a few times during the day and in the evening to be sure you were present and focused on the right things. And if you weren't feeling what you wanted to feel, you changed how you felt. So I'm going to ask you again, and then I'm going to ask you to call in. It's fun when people call in. So here's the question for you. How are you feeling right now? How are you feeling? Now, again, you, hopefully you got some ideas from the list I read a few moments ago. If you happen to be just tuning in, whatever it is you're feeling right now, how are you feeling? I'd like you to think about that for a moment. I'm going to just let pause and stop talking so... Instead of my chatter, you're just listening to what you're saying to yourself right now. Okay. I hope you've locked in on something you're feeling. Now, what I want to ask you to do next is think about... I'm going to give you two scenarios... 
One scenario I'd like you to think about for a moment is in your lifetime, have you ever had a person who coached you? They weren't necessarily a, a, a sports team coach or a music coach or a vocal coach. They were just somebody who coached you in a time when you needed some support and some understanding and they cared enough to listen to you and to understand you and to give you some guidance that really mattered and you were incredibly appreciative. So I'd like you to just stop and think about maybe when you were a young kid Maybe you were in high school. Maybe you were after high school in a technical school or you went to work or the military or college or you did something after school in the early years. Maybe it was then or maybe it was in your early career or if you're in mid-career, maybe you're in late career or even you're very tired. Is there somebody in your life that was meaningful, meaningful to you as a coach? And would you think about them and think about what they did and how they made you feel? How they made you feel? And also, how do you feel about them as you're thinking about them? What feelings come up for you as you're thinking about this person or these people? One coach for me in high school was somebody that knew my name. I don't know if he cared about me as an individual, but he cared deeply for us as a team. This happened to be a varsity soccer team. The coach was Coach Blanchard. I used to call him Doc, Doc Blanchard. And while I don't know that he ever talked to me personally in ways that made a difference, he made everyone on his teams believe we were capable of anything. We could do the impossible. We were a small town competing against bigger towns and, and even city teams and yet we won championships because we worked as hard as anybody could work. I don't want to say we worked harder than everybody else because there were other coaches that did this too. But nobody worked harder than us. Nobody believed more in our own capabilities because he pushed us to be able to do things that we didn't think we were even capable of. And I remember him fondly. Not because of the nice words or the pat on the back or the little hug, but because he pushed me to believe I was it was possible for me to do what I thought was impossible. And all of us felt that. So it isn't always someone who gives you the hug and the warm gesture or word. But sometimes it is. But that's just a little difference. So who coached you and what, and what kind of feeling did it have for you? So that's one scenario. The other scenario I'd like you to think about is a time when you were with family. Maybe you were a child and your family growing up. Maybe you're a dad or a mom or a sister or a brother. And sometime in your past, maybe it's recent, maybe it was this week, or maybe it was a while ago, you remember a time when it just felt like in your mind's family was supposed to feel. We just had a wonderful time. We enjoyed each other immensely. Maybe it was after a challenging situation that we looked back and we laughed about because it was so scary, but we all got through it and it was, it was just wonderful. Or maybe it was just an enjoyable week we spent together, someplace special. And it doesn't have to be far away. It could be we went camping in a tent and we just spent time. It was only 20 miles or five miles away from our home, but we all just had such a good time cooking out, cleaning together, working together, supporting each other, and just going for hikes smelling the roses, looking at the trees, going for a swim if we were by a water somewhere. Something special that happened as a family. Now, having said that, and giving you a second to think about that, I'd like you to think, did my feelings change? Whatever I was feeling, remember I asked you to think about what are you feeling right now? And then I gave you two things to think about. One was, is there somebody special in your life as a coach that coached you in a moment that made a huge difference for you? How did the person make you feel and how do you feel thinking about them? And then I asked you to think about a time with your family, somewhere, some part of your family, whether you were the kid in the family, the adult in the family, or just one member of the family, um, somehow you felt like it was a special time. 
And if it changed your feelings at all, would you call up and give me a call and talk about that with me? Because I want to make a point, but I, I don't want to just tell you this. I want to see if anybody really had a change in feelings. And if you did, would you give me a call? The number here is 203 336 9756. 203 336 9756. And I'll give you a moment to to think about what you want to say and give me a call. And don't worry about calling and not getting it quite right because that's not what this is about. This is just about did anything change for you and we'll figure it out together. So again, the number is 203-336-9756. And I'll stop and just let you call in if you've got something you'd like to say. Thank you. This is the part where I wonder, is anybody really out there listening? <laughs> Again, the number to call is 203-336-9756. Well, I don't have any takers so far. And, um, but this is a part of the show I'd love to have someone. So if you, if you're in a place at all, you can call, that'd be great. And somebody did. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, this is Chuck. You're on the air. Who am I talking to, please? Hello? Oops. It's not working. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Phone, phone, phone. Oh, okay. Can you talk? Are you on now? Hello? Hi. Hi, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, could no, that's you... okay. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, who am I talking to, please? Well, this is Bob. I'm calling from up in Terryville. Oh, hi, Bob. Thanks for calling in. Oh, and I got hey, another caller, well, too. You know what? Yeah, your, your, your plea struck, it made me feel strong feelings when you said that no one was calling. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> Good morning. So, did, well, does anything change for you at all if you think about the things I was talking about, Bob? Well, of course. Of course it did. And, you know, I, I, I don't really know where you're going with the conversation. Um, but thanks for inviting me to be a part of it. I'm a psychotherapist. and I'm on vacation this week, which is how I happen to be enjoying the afternoon listening to who else? WPKN. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And that makes me feel good. Right. And... Um, you, you, I couldn't help but be reminded of, of an exercise that I do with my patients all the time and, and to, to make the point that if you change the way you think, in other words, if you challenge your preoccupied thoughts that you may be having in times of trouble or grief or, 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 or frustration or stress, if you change the content of those thoughts, your feelings have to change. That's that's how we work, and that's an incredibly powerful concept. So if you change the thoughts you're having, the feelings will also change too. That's, that's how we work. Right. So that's interesting. So um, the, the idea of changing feelings is something where, as a psychotherapist, you're skilled in that. You're taught how to do that. Um, but a lot of people don't really believe it's possible to change their feelings. And I imagine you've seen that, Bob, where people feel like, you know, what? and this is what this is when you say, where am I going with this? The, the, point, the point is sometimes people feel like, you know what, whatever it is I'm feeling, that's what I'm stuck with. I mean, that's the hand I was dealt and that's what I, the cards I have to play. And uh, I mean, how do, if you're asking me not to be angry and I'm angry, that's not going to work because I'm angry, right? Indeed, indeed. And and you, you, if you're angry, if you're experiencing anger, first of all, it it can also help people to recognize that that's your anger. In other words, you've created it. Now, I don't know about other people, but me, I have a tendency to blame those who quote, made me angry. And the reality is that nobody can make me feel anything. They're, they're, they're first and foremost my feelings. And I probably ought to listen to them because if that fellow over there made me angry, 
Well, that probably requires some sort of thoughtful response on my part. You know, and I'm not necessarily suggesting the punch in the nose or the harsh word, but those feelings, like everything else in our brain, they're, they're there for a reason, and we really, we really need to learn to listen to our feelings, because our feelings will never, ever lie to us. They may, they may confuse us, but if you can feel it, there's a reason for it. So um, your, your conversation today, it just, it just made me realize and, and think of that very, very powerful truth. It's, 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 it's really our feelings. So I think it was Darwin that was the first one to write about this, Bob. It was really talked about as an evolutionary system as the emotions we feel are part of what protect us and save us and help Indeed. us. Um, but but just like our brain can trick us at times, so can our feelings, I believe. Uh, you oh, know, all the time. Right? So, so well, feelings are really helpful. That's why this concept that I call an emotion roadmap is about, you know, stopping in, checking in with yourself and thinking about how am I feeling? Because sometimes the feelings we have are extremely helpful for what we're trying to get done. But what I, you know, years ago when I started working with the pioneers in emotional intelligence, the, the concept of that there are certain feelings that are better for particular tasks than other feelings struck me as fascinating because no one plans emotionally what they want to experience. And But what if we did? So now when, I, when I'm working with people these days, like, like I was just mentioning, I was working with a bunch of coaches, I think when you have a difficult conversation with someone that you're avoiding maybe, or at least you know, you're hesitant to have because you're worried about escalation and all kinds of other things, um, right, right. That, that you think about it in three parts. You think about the beginning of the conversation where you set the tone, the middle of the conversation, and I used to be a therapist too, and where, where actually you're talking about stuff that really is going to matter and make a difference. And so if, if, we're, if we get this part right, then the rest of, rest of the day and the week and might be a lot better if we can really figure out what each other is saying and we're really hearing and respecting and valuing one another. Yeah. And, and we're focused and really making sure that the way my words are coming across are as intended and not creating defensiveness. And then finally, when at the end of the conversation, what we want people to feel and what we want ourselves to feel is appreciated and respected and grateful. Indeed. And so if we can, if we can plan emotionally how we want any conversation like that to happen, how can we not be better than if we just wing it? Well, our, and our emotions kind of trick us. I, I think our emotions can trick us into confusing our feelings with our thoughts. I mean, if, if we want someone to come away from a conversation feeling appreciated, well, is feeling appreciated? Is that really a feeling word? I mean, when I think you appreciate me, how does that thought make me feel? Again, some would challenge that these are just gimmicks and psychobabble. <laughs> well, see, I, 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 I limit myself. If I can say, Bob, I feel and, and, and answer it with appreciated, I'll, I'll consider that a feeling word. <laughs> That's, and, yeah. and, and, and I'm with you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I appreciate the opportunity to connect with you today. Thanks so much for the call, Bob. And thanks for opening the doors and listening to my plea for a caller. <laughs> appreciate oh, it. My, my, indeed, my pleasure. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Peace. Hi, this is Chuck. You're on the air. Who, who am I talking to, please? Nick. Nick, how you doing? If I was doing any better, I'd have a problem. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you Great. piqued my curiosity when you said, uh, how do you feel today? How do you feel right now? And uh, just feel great. That's great. Good for uh, you. I disagree with the caller just before me, about the psychoanalyst, wherever he was, the, yeah, uh, Bob, whatever he did there. Yeah, psychotherapist. Uh -huh. <laughs> when he said, he said, well, you know uh People can't make me feel a certain way. I shouldn't let them. That that uh, I don't think that's true at all. Mm, I'm not sure he said exactly I mean, that, but I think he said you have a, you have different ways to react to it. Yeah. So, in other words, you are being uh, he, there is an emotional presence from this person. He's making you feel something. But but the point I wanted to make was sure. I've always surrounded myself. Two points. I've always surrounded myself. With people that were uh, upbeat, uh, positive, uh, and then you, you see, then you have these other type of people that they just dwell on the negative, and they hang around with people that have all these problems. 
I'm sure you've talked to people that uh, they go to these AA meetings and they come back and they tell you, you know, Jesus, Joe, he has all these problems. He does. And I'm saying to myself, if that was me, if I was at that meeting, I'd go out and have a drink having to listen to that. Uh, okay, well, So <laughs> I think I just dismiss myself with people with negative feelings. I mean, as you have probably done with your life, you want to surround yourself with people that are uh, on an even keel, let's say. You know what, I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, no, I do. And I think it's an important point you're making, Nick, because I think one of the strategies, right? Yeah. Sometimes we ask ourselves, how do we want to turn around how we're feeling if we're not feeling great like you said you were? But if we're feeling like down or depressed, then you, you don't want to hang out with a group of people that are going to be even more exactly. depressing to be with. So if you think about some of the people you've chosen to be friendly with and how yeah. often you see certain people and how they're having an impact on you, which is your point about people do have impacts on us, um, then of course you're right in the sense that if we surround ourselves with people that tend to be more upbeat or at least calm and, and, and reasonable in their appraisals of difficult challenges that they face without going overboard or without always walking around with a cloud over their head and being sort of right. pessimistic and depressed, then sure, we're going to feel better. And that's a strategy, I think. These are strategies. And so I think you, a lot of these people with the negative feelings, they, they have... Uh less friends or it's like a perpetual negativity cycle where they're just always in this funk and I never let myself get like that. I mean, even as a child, I, all my friends were upbeat. Uh, I'm 65. We all went for walks. There was pickup games. Uh, I played football, baseball. Uh, I think it's, it, it might even just be a lifestyle. I, I think I think you've been, what you're saying is that people have choices about who they surround themselves with. Yeah, and those and those are real choices. Together with Thanksgiving people and then the Christmas, you just know right off the bat. As soon as you sit down, there's going to be X, Y, and Z. It's going to be all about them with uh, their problems. Uh, I can't get a job. I did this, but and then uh, a lot of that stuff basically ninety nine percent just rolls off me. It really does. That's and I think that's the key thing to let. Things roll off you as an individual, not get caught up in other people's problems. Well, yeah, let me let me let me let me um, agree and disagree with that because here's here's I mean, where here's where here's where so I agree. Much. Here's where I agree. If nothing's, if nothing's changing, this is periodically, you're just going to get together with a certain group of people and they're going to be a certain way. I absolutely agree with what you're saying. Where I might disagree is if there's somebody I care about who's struggling with something and they're having a hard time and I want to be helpful to them, then I'm not walking away and I'm not letting their roll. I'm trying to help them. But what about somebody that's uh, 20, 30 years into this and everybody has tried and it's, it's always a pity party. It's just poor me, poor me. You, you try to explain to them, you know, pull yourself up. Do, you know, try doing this, try doing that. And it's always because I think they, they uh, become... Uh, enthralled with this with this pity party thing it, it's almost like uh this is how they want to run their life and they want to include you in it because well maybe he'll give me some advice but then i'm not going to take it anyway well so i wouldn't i would i would say nick that's not what i was talking about i was talking about somebody oh. who's got something that just happened and they're struggling oh. with and they're trying to fix it or deal oh, with that's it totally different i'm that, talking that, about well, perpetuity no i understand somebody you've known all these years and it's been the same song yeah and, and, and so over. and so let me support that aspect of what you're saying in this way, which is if I continue to just be a, a, a shoulder for them to cry on, uh, I'm enabling that behavior, and that's not exactly. helpful that's right. either. You said it better than me. Yeah, that's not helpful either. Yeah, so, I mean, the point that I'm trying to make here is, and this is the point really, which is really what Bob was asking about too, which is I think that sometimes, and, and you know, when you see people who seem to be always a certain way, is there nothing you can do to change it? I, well, I, I don't get, uh, you know, one of the things that I say to people is, first of all, um, you haven't failed at helping that person change until you just stop trying. Because as long as you're trying, at least you think. Now, maybe you give up because you just, I don't think I have the skill set or this person has the interest in changing. So I'm done with that and I'm moving on. And I, I mean, that's a choice yeah, people make. At some point, this person has to take on some responsibility for their life. Absolutely. It isn't always somebody else's problem and it isn't always somebody else's fault because of your lot in life. I mean, if you get into a funk or something, I always say go for a walk. I've never seen anyone come back from a nice walk. You know, sour. 
You know so, what I'm saying? Get out. Get away. Put your cell phone down. Put, get away from the, the, the computer. Go take yourself for a walk. Do something that makes joy happen in your life. Yeah. Right? I right. mean, life's too short. And yeah. I know you know the type of person I'm talking to. Right. It's so just this perpetuity over and over again. Right. So the point... Uh, anyway, the, good show. But the, the point I want to sh- just leave you with, Nick, is I think Go that ahead. I want everybody to understand that there are emotions that are changeable. And even for those people who might be listening who fit that category you're talking about, who tend to be really pessimistic about life and really depressed a lot of the time, I think it's possible to change that. But it doesn't come from somebody else. It comes from inside and you decide that you want to make that happen. But sometimes That's other people exactly can help. That's exactly what I was thinking, but again, you said it better than I. Well, you're, you're the broadcast. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. All right. Ciao. Take, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, folks. Anybody else want to call in and weigh in on this? we got a couple minutes left. 203-336-9756. Let me just finish up by saying this to you. I believe that there are feelings that we can change. The whole concept of the emotion roadmap is the idea that when we're not feeling something that's helpful and if we're walking around depressed all the time, uh, Nick's not alone in feeling like, hey, why would I want to be with you? And Bob's saying that if we change some of the things that we do, and Nick is actually saying the same thing in some ways, go out for a walk, do something. And actually, sometimes I help people. I say, make a list of the things that you enjoy doing. And then look at that list and say, are they with other people? Are they by yourself? Do they cost money? And when did you do them last? And start planning daily things that you're going to do that you know you enjoy doing. So sometimes when we change our behaviors, they can change the thoughts that we have and the feelings that we have. And there are certain feelings I want everyone to recognize that can change. If I asked you, most of you who are listening who didn't call, to think about a time when your family was really together and felt great being with them, chances are whatever you were feeling a moment before you started to think about that, If you were in the unpleasant, low-energy area, you probably moved over to the still low-energy but the pleasant area because now you're thinking about some memory that's driving that you know that uh, that that adrenaline that uh, that good feeling, the dopamine, that that chemical reaction that causes us to feel more positive. So sometimes, just by changing our thoughts or even doing a behavior that we know we enjoy, we can change the way we feel. But not always, and that's the point I want to leave you with. There are some feelings that you you just really can't change, at least not right away. For instance, you can't cheat grief. I mean, if we know somebody we loved who passed away, and we know they lived a good life, and they were they were wonderful people, and we're thinking that you know they're in heaven now, and we're but I mean, all that is maybe true in your mind, but you're still gonna miss them. And it's still going to hurt and they're still gone and there's still a sense of grief that you can't avoid. When something meaningful is a, represents a loss in your life, you need to spend time grieving. Now, if you grieve too long and it gets to be despondency and depression, then that's a different story. But you can't cheat it. And that's my point. There are certain feelings, even anger sometimes, if it's a real injustice and you see it all the time and you feel like you need to deal with it then you need to deal with it. However, I want you to understand for most of the feelings we experience in our lives, we have the capacity and the capability to learn how to change how we feel to make things better for what we're trying to get done. Hope you enjoyed the show, folks. You've been listening to the Emotion Roadmap. Take the wheel and control how you feel. This is Chuck Wolf, and I will be on next week. I look forward to talking with you. And if you're willing to try three times a day monitoring how you feel, say 10 30 2 30 and 7 30 give me a call next week let me know how it goes thanks everybody bye-bye funding for simsbury community television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you thank you